Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, come on, guys. We get more enthusiasm on that. Come on, Slade, lead it. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, today. Today. How do you make sure that your presentations end in yes? Every time. <coughs> How do you do that? You have to have a plan, and you then have to orchestrate that plan with an effective presentation. Today we're going to discuss how a structure for how to do that so that every time you want to make a presentation and win, you can design a way to do it and you can execute. Anybody interested? All right. When you apply this formula and this process, you will rise into the top echelon, the top 20% of all the salespeople who sell today. And what do we know about that top 20% of salespeople? They make 80% of the money. He defines success as feeling good about yourself. You feel good about yourself, chances are you've been successful. If you don't feel good about yourself, you need to do something differently to achieve a higher level of success. How can you feel good about yourself on an ongoing basis? Stephen Covey in The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which is on your reading list, it's on your list of books you can read for extra credit, and which I highly recommend, says this, create your own mission statement, which is about which will serve the purpose of your life. Like, why are you here? What do you hope to do that's valuable in your life? So when you set that mission statement, it then helps you understand whether or not you're successful. My personal mission statement is to inspire people to live better lives. It's one of the reasons I took this job over doing something else, because it fulfills that purpose. And when I do this, it makes me feel good. Well, this is how to have a high quality life. <coughs> so with this same idea, how can you have a successful experience in sales every time? You have, to, you have to plan. You have to identify what's important to be able to have a successful experience. Now, Futrell talks about this, but he gets the order a little wrong. Let's start. first thing you think about when you are planning a presentation is not about the product, it's not about the process, it's not about the presentation, it's about who you're calling on. I'm not talking about the average slime bag salesperson, I'm talking about the professional. The professional says, who am I going to call on? And with today's fabulous information treasure trove on the internet, you creep up. You find out everything you can about that person. And you create what Futrell calls the customer profile. You don't set the objective in front of the profile. That is a product-based approach. We're pros. We're setting who first. You create your customer profile, which is 
everything you can possibly know about the person. Then. You identify how to know whether or not you're going to be successful on the call. You set the objective. Every objective must be smart. So, Ms. Smith, talk to us about <coughs> the steps. <coughs> Making sure your objective is smart. Number one. Specific, measurable, attainable, achievable, realistic, time bound. From this point forward, you want to arrive to the top 20%? Make sure every goal you set, <coughs> every objective you establish is smart. Now remember the question about Jake's Body Shop on the quiz. How many had that one? Jake's Body Shop where Avram goes in and is the salesman, and he's going to try to make a sale. Remember that, Mr. Hager? Ms. Hines? Yeah, I love him. All right. Now, in that example, this is a salesman going in to sell Jake's Body Shop paint. And the first question is, is, where is Jake's Body Shop? In what state? For those of you who have seen the Blues Brothers. Illinois. Brian just earned a dairy dog. Sometimes some useless knowledge you get rewarded for that. You're going into Jake's body shop. So in that example, Abram is the salesperson. What is measurable, what is specific about his plan? Of paint, sell six cans of paint. That's a specific can. So when you when you go into <coughs> Jake's, he knows what he's going to do. Number two, is it measurable? Six cases of paint. What's the difference between attainable and realistic? This is really important. Attainable, achievable is the upper limit. Is it possible for me to do that? Is it humanly possible to sell six cases? Why don't I say, I'm going to sell 60? It's impossible. If you set unachievable goals, can you feel good about yourself, Mr. Yoga? No. You can't score even Michael Jordan. <coughs> couldn't score 100 points every day. If you set unrealistic goals, you're going to have a life in which you are continually dissatisfied with yourself. You cannot feel good about yourself. <laughs> so when you set a goal, it has to have a bottom bound which says, is it realistic? Could I reasonably expect Jake to buy six cases of paint? Well, he ordered six cases Last month, and he ordered six cases the month before. Is that realistic? Yeah, I think I can sell him six cases. I don't want to set four cases. That's not strong enough. And is it time-bounded? In this example, 
in Jake's body shop with the quiz, that Jake or Avram did not set a time-bounded goal. The time-bounded goal should have been, I'm selling them today. Every goal you set from now on, if you are really, if you really want to achieve it, make it smart. If it's not smart, it's just a dream. So what objective should you establish? When it's smart, it should be possible that when you go in and you follow the steps, you can achieve your objective. You should set objectives that you can achieve in every sales call. Every one. Because remember when Daniel Pink talked about the quality of being buoyant, Mr. Ryan? What's that mean? Being able to continually... More volume. Being able to continually uh, sell your product. Is it about the product or is it about me? It's about you. And that is about you keeping yourself up. Because all you hear about is, no, 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 I don't want it, I don't need it. All these no's come in. You get to have ways to keep yourself up. So when you set smart objectives that are achievable, you want to end your day and say, I hit every one of my objectives. Then you can have an adult beverage. You can feel good about it. You can achieve. Now, when you set these objectives, as salespeople, should you set results-based goals for yourself every day, every week, every month? That means I'm going to sell $60,000 worth of my product this week. Why not, Mr. Slate? You should set more of the long term if you are continuing. I mean, can you control? whether someone buys. So if I set a goal that's a results-based goal, what happens? If I can't control that, I'll be disappointed if I set that as my goal. What can I control? I can control my actions, what I do. I can control when I'm prospecting the number of, of times I dial the phone. I can control the number of times, now with some numbers, if I make the conversion, if I make 10 dials and one person answers, then I can set the answer goal. If I do my research and I know if I make 100 dials and I talk to 10 people and, and one, I set up an appointment, then I just know that that's what I have to do to get an appointment. And once I make that conversion, I can say every week I want to set five appointments. That tells me I have to make 500 dials, I have to make this many conversations to get an appointment. When you have those ratios, then you are in control of your activities. Here's what happens. You succeed in your activities, you succeed in the results. You just can't predict when they're going to come. Then your sales manager can help you if your conversion ratio between your activity and the result is too long, it just means you're ineffective. You need to learn how to close more often how to make better presentations, how to ask better questions. You can analyze every step in the process to then shrink the, the amount of time between the call and the result. After I set the objective, the next thing I focus on Our customer benefits. So I'm thinking to myself, I've got, I'm thinking about Jake. I know everything about Jake's body shop. I've got his buying history. I know that he goes to the Methodist Church because I found him on LinkedIn. I've connected to him in advance. I know he is loves the Boys and Girls Club. 
I know he's in his 40s, he's married, and he has three kids. I put that in my contact record. I have that on my phone when I walk in. And I'm thinking about all this when I set my objective. Once I set my objective, six cases of paint, then I say to myself, what benefits will occur, will accrue to Jake if he buys my six cases? the benefits to Jake? My objective is the six cases. Selling Jake six cases today. If he does that, what benefits accrue to him? Jake is the owner of the body shop. What? How would he get money? I'm selling him six cases. So he takes the paint, he puts it in his paint machine. He has a body shop. He sprays the paint on the new surfaces he's constructed. Because people have damaged cars and they want cars that are now fixed when they go out. So it's a benefit to him of selling in the six cases of paint. <laughs> Cars will be better. Is that the real benefit? That's a benefit, so continue. What other benefits are going to accrue to them? Cars will look better. The customers will be satisfied. Sales increase in the future. Referrals. He makes more money, right? So if you're Avram and you're walking in to Jake, the first thing out of your mouth ought to be, hello, Jake, I'm here to bring more business to Jake's body shop. Isn't that what he's interested in? Frankly, he doesn't give a damn about your paint. He wants more customers. The paint is just connects the dots between the wrecked vehicles and the customers who are satisfied. So you got the benefit. What need does Jake have that will be fulfilled when his customers are satisfied? What need, I'm going to ask that, ask that differently. Jake gets the six cases of paint. What needs will be satisfied when he buys those six, six cases? He will have the availability to offer different paint colors, paint for cars, serve his customers better. He's going to have a paint that can be used effectively mm -hmm. that will cover the surface in a, in a constructive, efficient, cost-effective manner, right? That's what the paint does. So you say, I'm here, Jake, to talk to you about how to get more customers to help you make more money. I know you're looking for paint that will enable you to inexpensively cover all these vehicles so that customers will be happy. If you buy six cases, my idea today is for you to buy six cases. When you buy them, you are going to get more customer referrals because people are going to love their cars. And in the end, you're going to make more money. Doesn't matter if the need is presented before the benefit the benefit. Yes, it does matter. First thing out of your mouth ought to be the number one benefit to him. What? You got it. He goes, yeah, I'm all over it, man. What are you going to do to bring more customers in? I got it. I know you need a paint to do this. You're right. I need good paint. Buy my paint. Mm. Have I sold them yet? 
No, I've just introduced the idea wrapped around his needs and benefits to him. Now we're gonna go through this expressly on Friday. I'm just introducing the idea. And after you say the idea, subject need idea, then you follow through with, in addition to satisfying customers, those customers are gonna provide you with more referrals because they're gonna be so happy. And the end result is, when you look at your bank account next month, it's going to be bigger than it is today. Subject name, idea, benefit. All you do, now, have you sold them? No, you've just introduced the idea that there are some benefits that are going to flow to him if, you, if he takes your idea. Once you have the benefits and the needs identified, then and only then do you create your presentation. I just did that. I just created the first part of your presentation, which is always subject, need, idea, benefit. <laughs> Number one benefit becomes the subject. 